Johnson of the International Secret Police. Zero. After capturing the octopus and his band of gangsters, Speed, Clint, and Barney stop off at the house of La Chaux Ring to call for Larry Winfield and to also bid their friends farewell. Clint tells Barney to fly the secret police plane to Nagchuka and await him there while he settles last-minute affairs in Lhasa. Just as they are about to leave, shots are heard in the garden where Bob Gilmore and Chief Tipo are guarding the prisoners. It turns out that the octopus gangsters try to escape, but the Tibetan police overpower them. And now... Leaving Speed and Clint to attend to the octopus and official business in Lhasa, Barney flies on to Nagchuka with Larry Winfield. We find him with Dr. Kingsley and little Jean. And I tell you, Doc, I've had plenty of adventures and exciting times in my day, but I've never seen anything to equal when Clint had to make the choice of giving up our chances of capturing the octopus or risking Speed's life. Must have been terrible. Would Kwan Wu have really shot Speed, Barney? Sure he would, Jane. Them guys have no more conscience than a tadpole. Oh. Hey. <laughs> well, what are you crying for, Jane? Speed's safe now. I know, but I get so scared when I think of what might have happened if Bob hadn't come in time. <laughs> ah, that's what I call real friendship, honey. I'd like to know of somebody that'd cry when they thought of what almost happened to me. Only they'd be crying most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's better. Don't want Speed and Clint to see you crying when they come. You think they'll be here soon, Barney? Any minute. I know Clint isn't going to waste any time in getting the octopus safe behind bars. We cleaned up his gang here in Tibet, but that don't mean a thing in India, on the high seas, or any other place in the world. He's got headquarters in every country, you know. And the minute we're out of Tibet, they'll all be trying to rescue him because he's the brains of the mob. Without the octopus, they're sunk. I'm more thankful than I can say to know that you boys have captured him at last. When I see what he's done to Marsha and Larry Winfield, two innocent people, I can easily imagine the ruin he has caused in other lives. Yeah, that guy has plenty to answer for. Look at your own case, for instance. You was doing fine in Hong Kong until you got mixed up with the octopus. And mostly because of helping us. The secret police won't forget what you've done, Doc. Great heaven, Barney. I only wish I could have done much more. I was so helpless. Oh, there's a car driving up outside. Oh, Barney, is it... Is it... Yeah, Gene, looks like Speed, Clint, and the gang, all right. Boy, they sure didn't waste any time. Who's that elderly man getting out of the car, Barney? That, Dr. Kingsley, is world enemy number one. You mean the octopus? And not an imitation. The octopus in the flesh. And, of course, you recognize Quan Wu with him. Yes. Here, here what's the matter, Jean? Do, do you mind if I hold on to your hand and Daddy's, Barney? I, I'm kind of afraid. You bet I mind. Jean, I love it. But you needn't be afraid of the octopus anymore. No, sir, Ray. Right this way, Speed. Hi, Clint. Hello, Hello. 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 How are you? I think this corner's the best place for the octopus and Wu. We'll just need two guards inside. Very well, Mr. Barlow. Hunger. Hunger. Well, it's good to see you all safe and sound, Clint. Well, thanks, Doctor. And I don't mind telling you we're glad to be here. Oh, I'd like you to meet La Chaute Ring, who's helped me more than I can say. Well, how, how do you do? do? How do you do? What do you think of the octopus, Dr. Kingsley? Well, it's hard to say, Speed. It's hard to believe that this elderly man is the octopus. Oh, we have plenty of proof as to that, Doc. What I want to know is who the octopus is. You mean you don't know, even after arresting him? Not unless Speed or Clint got more out of him on the way coming here. No, Barney, he didn't say a word. Why don't you take his disguise off, Speed? Haven't got time to even do that, Gene. We're going to wait with everything until we get him back to Chief Riley in New York. Yes, we came here mainly to say goodbye, Dr. Kingsley. Uh, 
Are Larry and Marsha all right? Yes, they were asleep when we left the hotel. That's all those kids need. Plenty of rest and good care. I would have liked to have said goodbye to Miss Marsha and Larry, but we'll see them back in America pretty soon. Well, that reminds me, Clint. What arrangements have been made for getting us out of Tibet? Well, I've given full instructions to Bob Gilmore, Doctor, and Chief Tipo. I left them in Lhasa to clear up things that we didn't want to wait for. But they'll come here as soon as possible. Bob's going to bring you and Jean and the Winfields out of Tibet just as soon as Miss Marsh and Larry are strong enough to travel, Dr. Kingsley. Oh, I'll be so glad to get back to America. I am sorry that your visit to Tibet has been such an unhappy one, Miss Kingsley. I hope that you will not judge our country by the circumstances which were caused by the octopus. Oh, no, Mr. Seawing. I think Tibet is wonderful. Yes, indeed. Someday we'll come back when we have more time to see the wonders of Lhasa and similar cities. I hope so. Well, and now I think we'd better be on our way. The plane already, Bonnie? Yep, she's waiting over at the landing field outside Nogchuka. We better get going, then. Y'all coming to see us off? Oh, I should say so, Steve. Well, you'll soon be following us, Jean. You'll see us off now, but when you return to America, we'll be there to welcome you. <laughs> well, come along, everybody. Huh? Come along, Jean. Oh, hi. You Bye. too, Steve. Yeah, let's get going. Have you and Steve got your parachutes fastened on, Bonnie? Yeah, Clint. Well, then I guess everything's set. Oh, Mr. C. Ring. Uh, yes, Mr. Barlow. On behalf of the International Secret Police, I, I want to thank you for aiding us in our pursuit of the octopus. If there's any way in which we can ever cooperate with you or your government, I hope that you will call on us immediately. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. It has been a great pleasure to know all of you. My government is sorry that you must leave so quickly. We hope to honor you and Speed and Mr. Dunlap as you deserve. But that will have to wait. We understand the need for haste. Gee, thanks, Mr. Searing. I hope you can come to America someday. Thank you, Speed. I shall try my best. And now, Octopus, you and Quan Wu climb inside the plane. You better go along too, Bonnie. It's a pleasure. Well, and now, goodbye, Jean. Dr. Kingsley. Goodbye until we meet again. So long, Jean. So long, Doctor. Oh, goodbye, Goodbye, Glenn. Goodbye. Glenn. goodbye. 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 Octopus enjoying the flight, Speed. They're quiet enough, Barney. I'm keeping an eye on them while you and Clint take the plane over these mountains. Yeah, it's no cinch hopping over these babies. These are the Himalayas. Better climb even higher, Barney. We're still below those peaks ahead. I'd better fly around them then, don't you think? Otherwise, you'll have to drag out the oxygen tank. All right, then fly around them. If you want to risk yourself in the downdrafts. Ah, uh, they won't bother me none. We're so high that even a downdraft wouldn't do any more damage than scare me to death. Clint... The octopus has fallen asleep. Oh, good. If he's asleep, he won't be figuring out a way of escape. Don't kid yourself. That devil fish figures even in his sleep. No use now. Golly, just think, fellas. We've really caught the octopus. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> well, you glad it's all over, Speed? Well, I'm glad we caught him, Clint. But, gee, I liked all the adventures we had in doing it. Even the real dangerous ones. Yeah, I suppose you'll never get tired of adventure, Speed. Clint and me never do. Oh, we talk a lot about vacations and stuff, but we're always restless until we're on another case. Say, do I hear right? <laughs> Grandma is really breaking down and admitting that he likes adventure. Ah, oh, nobody ever takes me serious. <laughs> Quan Wu. Quan Wu. Yes, Master? Are the secret police watching us? Only the boy. And now even he is not watching. They are laughing. They believe you to be asleep. That is exactly what I wanted them to believe. Uh, what do you mean? Have you some plan? Kwanu, I swore a long time ago that the secret police would never catch me alive. You do not mean... Do not waste words. Let me know if the boy turns his head. Nothing must interfere with my plan. They are paying no attention to us now. They are watching the mountain below. Kwanu. We are near the door? Yes. Handcuffed as you are, can you open it without attracting attention? I believe so. Yes, I am sure of it. And you do it quickly? Yes. Then listen carefully. When the opportune moment arrives, I want you to open the door, then stand aside. I am going to jump from the plane. Jump? 
But you will be killed. Better this way than the slower death at the hands of the secret police. But what will happen to me? If you do not talk, Juan Mu, my band will find a way of freeing you from whatever prison you may be in. If you do betray the organization, you will be found in your prison and destroyed most unpleasantly. I would never talk, never. Good. I thought you would see wisdom. Wait, the boy is looking. Now it is safe once more. It will be a little while before he turns again. Now is the time to open the door. But, Master, you have no chance of coming through this alive. Open the door. Yes, Master. Farewell. Goodbye. And remember, do not turn traitor. No. The octopus, he's jumping! Quick, get back there before Wu jumps, too! Here, what are you doing? Gee, gee whiz! Have no fear, sweet Gibson. I love life better than to jump from a plane over the Himalayas. Clint, Barney, can you see the octopus? Yes, from this window. He's falling fast. Come up here, Steve. So he'd rather go out that way than have us take him alive. Yes, and we'd never be able to find his body in this section of the Himalayas. Gosh... Makes you feel kind of funny inside, doesn't it? Yeah, the end of the octopus. Look, he's disappeared through that cloud bank. Yes. As mysterious in death as he was in life. I wonder if we'll ever learn his real identity. Maybe from Wu. I don't think even he knew that speed. Well, all we can do is continue on with our flight and make our report in New York. What sort of report, Clint? Case of world versus the octopus. Closed by sudden death of defendant. That devil fish didn't need no defense. I should say not. Gee, octopuses are funny creatures. Well, in our report to New York, I'll close the case. I don't mind telling you we're all lucky to we'll come out of it alive. Well, Speed, this is the end of your first case with the International Secret Police. <laughs> 